Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the fifth video in the LVGL series, and today we will see how to use the keyboard on the display. We will use the keyboard to enter some information, like name and password, and then retrieve this information by the MCU and it to the computer via the UART. The main part of this project is going to be the UI design, so we will start with that. Let's start the Squareline Studio, and create a new project. Set the project folder, and let's name it Keyboard. The screen resolution is 320 by 240 pixels. The color depth is 16 for this ILI9341 LCD. Click Create to create the project. We need two text areas, one for the name, and another one for the password. Let's add the first text area, and I am renaming it to the text area name. Now add the second text area, and rename it to text area pass. Let's add the labels for the text areas. The text areas should be in one line mode, and I am also modifying the placeholders for both of them. Note the Y positions for the text areas and the labels, as we would need them in a while. Now add the keyboard, and align it as per the requirement. You can check the UI in the play mode. Alright let's hide the keyboard by default, and we will show it when needed. Let's add the event for the text area name. The event 1 will trigger when the text area is focused. Here we will set the basic property. Basically we will transform the text areas and the labels to new positions, so that they do not hide under the keyboard. Here I am changing the Y position of the text area name, and the label 1. Let's test it in the play mode. This is not the position I was expecting. Let me change it to minus 100. Alright this is fine, the text area and the label will move to this position when it is clicked. We will add the same transformation for the text area pass and the label too. This will make up enough space for the keyboard at the bottom of the display. Along with the transformation, we also want to show the keyboard when the text area is in the focus. So here I am adding the action to modify the flag. Set the target object as the keyboard, and remove the hidden flag. You can see the keyboard shows up, when the text area name is in the focus. Now we also want to hide the keyboard again, and set the text area to their default positions, when the focus is removed from the text area. To do this, we will add another event. Here we will add the same properties, but we will reset their Y transformations to their default positions. Also we will set the keyboard hidden flag, so the keyboard can hide. Let's test it. The keyboard shows up when the text area is in focus, and when I click outside the text area, their position resets back to default, and the keyboard hides. So this is working fine so far. Now we will add the same properties for the text area pass. Alright I have added the events 3 and 4 for the text area pass. Let's text it now. Everything is working as expected. Also note that the position does not reset when we switch focus from one text area to the another. Still when we type something on the keyboard it does not show up in any text area. So we need to assign the keyboard to a text area. When the text area name is in focus, we will add one more action, and that is to set the keyboard target. 
Here we will assign the keyboard 1 to the text area name. Similarly, when the text area pass is in focus, we will assign the keyboard 1 to the text area pass. You can see the keyboard data is now being displayed on the text areas. Since the text area passes for the password, let's enable the password mode here. You can see the text is being shown as the password now. We can also set the maximum length for the text areas. Here I am setting the 8 characters limit for the password. Let's test it now. You can see that I am not able to type more than 8 characters here. Let me change this to 10 characters. Also I am setting the limit for the name to 15 characters. Our UI is almost complete now. We still need to send the data entered here to the MCU. We will do this by adding an event to the keyboard. Here I left this set target to empty as we are setting it in the text area events. Let's add the event for the keyboard, which will trigger when it is ready. Basically this will trigger when this OK button is clicked. Here we will call a function, keyboard done, and we will write this function later in the code. Go to project settings, and choose the UI folder to save the UI files. Our LVGL inclusion is LVGL.h throughout the project. Click on export to export the UI files. Here is the project from the previous video on LVGL. We will remove the previous UI folder, and copy the new folder that we created just now. This project contains some extra definitions like LEDs, ADC, etc. Let's remove them from the project first. I am leaving the UART as it is, as it will be needed in today's project also. Let's delete the previously added code. There is not much to write in the code, let's open the UI event source file. Let's include the main header file first. Define the buffers to store the name and password data. Let's also define a data buffer, which we will send via the UART. Since we are going to send the data directly from the event to the UART, we need to define the UART handler as an external variable. The keyboard done function will be called when we press the OK button on the keyboard. Here we will first check what text area the keyboard is assigned to. If it is assigned to the text area name, we will copy the data from the text area to the name buffer we defined earlier. Now copy this data into the data buffer, and send it to the UART. Else if the keyboard is assigned to the text area pass, we will copy the data into the password buffer, and then send the data buffer to the UART. Include the standard I.O. for the sprintf. Let's typecast the data buffer. Alright there are no warnings now, so let's flash it to the board. 
I am going to use the WCH serial port to view the UART data from the MCU. Here I am using the board rate of 115200, with 8 data bits and no parity. Alright the project has been loaded to the MCU, and you can see the display shows the new UI. The keyboard is responding well, and the transformation is also working fine. Let's type the name now, and press the OK button. You can see the data showing up on the computer. Now I am going to type the password, and press OK. Here you can see the password data on the console. Let's try another name and password. We got the data on the console again. So we were able to use the keyboard, and retrieve the data from the display to the MCU. I hope you understood how to use the keyboard with the LVGL. We will cover some more details like custom mapping in the upcoming videos. This is it for this video. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.